Okay, so we're on to the final chapter of Further Starts, which is chapter eight, and it's called Quality of Tests. And basically, you get to the end of this chapter and you try and assess whether you think like a hypothesis test, like two different hypotheses tests, uh, which might be like the best kind of one to use. So what I've said here is this chapter appears quite large, but it's conceptually very small. So what I mean by that is it kind of feels like they do loads and loads of different things, but really there's actually not much concept behind this. You could say that it's a synoptic chapter as it recaps many of the ideas from chapters two, three, four, and five. So usually this is something that's probably the last thing that you would study. Um, and actually it's all right if you're studying this kind of quite near to the end of the course, because it's gonna help you revise everything that you've done in those chapters. So here is like the concept in a nutshell. The first kind of half of this chapter concerns itself with these two kinds of errors, which are called type one and type two errors. And when you do a hypothesis test, you've got lots of different outcomes, right? You could either um, accept the null hypothesis or accept the alternative hypothesis and those two outcomes could either be right or wrong so there are four kinds of outcomes one of the outcomes is going to be good right if you um, accept the null hypothesis and it's true then that's great if you accept the alternative hypothesis and that's true then it's great but these errors come up when you accept one of the hypotheses but the other one turns out to be true and we'll describe what this looks like in the context of these three different contexts and then kind of like a general one that we've got down here. So I picked this one because I thought, you know, we're all, uh, have all been students at some point, maybe you're all students right now. And if you're writing an essay, you might get a test for plagiarism, particularly if you're submitting an essay at university. So here it says the context is that a student's essay is tested for plagiarism using plagiarism detection software, but feeling particularly um, appropriate with lots of advancements with AI and stuff as well. So the null hypothesis is that there is no plagiarism. And the alternative hypothesis here is that there is plagiarism that the student has copied from someone. Now, a type one error is where the student is told that their essay is plagiarized when it is not. So in other words, the alternative hypothesis was kind of accepted or we could say this one was rejected. But in reality, the student wasn't plagiarizing. They didn't cheat. So it's not very nice because they've been told there's plagiarism, but in reality, it's not the case. And then the other type of error is the type two error, which is where the student is told their essay is accepted, but in fact, they had actually copied it from a friend. So this is where the null hypothesis was, um, was accepted, but in reality, they actually had plagiarized. So this kind of person got away with it. And it's an error because the test isn't performing correctly. We want the test to be able to get everyone who has copied kind of pulled up by the software and everyone who hasn't copied we just want them to be able to submit their essay normally so you'll see a similar kind of pattern here we've got the security system is being used to assess if suspicious packages are threats so the null hypothesis is not a threat alternative is 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 that it is a threat and then the type one error is where you're saying um you are rejecting this null hypothesis even though it was actually true because we're saying that the package is destroyed we thought that it was a threat but in reality it was actually harmless so we've accepted the alternative we thought it was a threat but in reality it just had books or whatever inside it the other type of error is where the package is not destroyed so they accepted the null hypothesis thinking that it was not a, th a threat but actually it contained harmful materials. And so you can see that if the test has a large chance of there being a type two error, this could be really, really dangerous. So you've got to be very careful when these kinds of tests are actually designed. And then one that hopefully people wouldn't have to come across, but you know, it says here, a doctor is testing a patient for a particular disease. The null hypothesis is that the people don't have the disease. And the alternative hypothesis is that they do have the disease. The type one error is where they are told that they have the disease, but in reality, they do not. So you can see all of these things are kind of in common here. It's like this thing is being accepted, but in reality, that's not the case. And then this type two error is that the pa patient is told they are free of the disease. So they're being told they don't have the disease, but in reality, they actually do have it. And just like this one up here, this is really, really dangerous because we want a medical test to be able to assess if someone has a disease um, and actually to be able to then like support them with it. And you're going to start seeing how these errors are kind of related to each other. We can't just say, let's kind of minimize both of these errors. 
they relate to each other in quite a few ways as well. So generally, if we have a statistical test being performed to check a parameter, that parameter could either be like a probability, it could be an average rate. The null hypothesis is that the parameter is correct and the alternative hypothesis is the parameter is not correct. So a type 1 error is where the alternative hypothesis is incorrectly accepted. Or we could say that the null hypothesis is incorrectly rejected. So there's kind of those flip sides of accepting the alternative is the same as rejecting the null. And the type 2 error is where the null hypothesis is incorrectly accepted. And you can kind of see that here. All of these null hypotheses were incorrectly accepted. So we're going to have a look a little bit more about these type 1 and 2 errors by kind of zooming in on a particular example of the first one, which was about us, the plagiarism detection software. So we would probably say that the null hypothesis is the student does not plagiarize, and the alternative is that the student did, did plagiarize. And at the beginning, I talked about those four kinds of outcomes that we could have. I just kind of wanted to drill down on what it looks like so that you can see those four different outcomes all at the same time. So if the null hypothesis is true, that the student didn't, pl didn't plagiarize and the test accepts the null hypothesis, that's great because the student didn't plagiarize and the software agreed with them. If the student did plagiarize, in other words, if this is true, and the test rejects the H0, which is sometimes described as the alternative hypothesis being accepted, then this is also great because the student plagiarized and the software caught them. So the software is doing what it was designed to do. And then just kind of thinking about these errors that we've already talked about on the previous table. If the null hypothesis is true and the test rejects the null hypothesis, this is saying that the student wasn't plagiarizing, but the software said they were. Now, this is called a false positive. It's false because it wasn't true. Um, and it's positive because the test is returning a positive result. In other words, the positive result meaning that the student did plagiarize. The outcome of the test said that the alternative was true. So that's called a false positive. And if any of you are going into medicine, this obviously I'm doing it in a context of plagiarism. But if you're going into medicine, this third example here, it's going to be incredibly important. You have this understanding of testing because you can see how this is going to play very importantly into the role of a doctor. And then the type 2 error, which is where we said the student is plagiarizing, but the software didn't catch them. Kind of the equivalent thing in the medical thing is that the person has the disease, but the test didn't diagnose them with the disease. And you can see how this could be potentially very dangerous. This is also called a false negative because the result of the test was negative. The student did not plagiarize or the person did not have the disease. And it's false because they actually did plagiarize. And they, if it was the medical context, they do have that disease. So we're going to try and find out probabilities of these type 1 and type 2 errors. But really what I wanted to do is just give you a broad overview of the whole chapter, because this is all of the chapter kind of summarized. Um, and then the rest of it is going to just be me kind of like drilling down with some examples and pulling out some of the nuance and some of the things that I think are a bit more um, challenging and just kind of specific to the style of the questions that get asked. So the extra information that I'm going to cover in more detail later in the chapter is that the probability of a type 1 error is called the act, or is not called, it is the same as the actual significance of the test, because it's the probability of incorrectly rejecting H0. It is also called the size of the test. So this probability of a type 1 error and the size, they are interchangeable. So those two things you're going to see kind of in conjunction as we get to later on in this chapter. We then also have, we've talked about the type 2 kind of error. If we talk about the 1 minus the probability of a type 2 error, this is called the power of the test. And it's the probability of correctly rejecting H0. Because type 2 error that we've set up here, that is when you have, um, you have accepted H0, but actually the alternative hypothesis was true. If we do one minus that, it becomes the probability of correctly rejecting H0, which you'll see later on, I'll explain that in more detail. And this is a good thing, you want to correctly reject H0. So when you design a test, you want to have a small size because this is the probability of incorrectly reject rejecting H0, and you want it to have a large power because the power is the probability of correctly 
rejecting H0. So this is doing something incorrectly, this is doing something correctly. And what you'll start to realize is as you minimize one error, the other increases. It's a balancing act. So you can't just say, okay, well, let's just make both type one and type two errors as small as possible so that we have these things, the green parts, as big as possible. If you try and minimize this too much, this one can get quite big. And if you try and minimize this type two error, this one can get quite big. So it's a real balancing act between those things. And then the last thing I've put here is that this chapter uses critical regions a lot. So make sure that you, you can do them for all the distributions that we have done hypothesis testing with. So I think that's geometric, binomial, um, Poisson, and I think that's probably it. And um, I guess we also need to find critical regions with the normal distribution too. So I'm going to start drilling down into more stuff to do with the type 1 and type 2 errors in the next videos.